taken from the Ultimate Killer Collection, by Stuart Dandel. John Thomas Straffen Child Killer John Thomas Straffen was born on the 27th of February, 1930. His place of birth was Borden Camp in Hampshire, where his father was based as a soldier in the army. He was the third child in the Straffen family, which appeared to have common incidences of learning difficulties among its members. When Straffen was at the tender age of two, his father was posted abroad and the family spent the next six years in India. In March of 1938, they returned to Britain and Straffen's father took a discharge from the army. The family then settled in Bath, Somerset. In October of 1938, at the age of eight, John Straffen was referred to a child guidance clinic for stealing and truancy. The very next year, in June of 1939, he came before a juvenile court for stealing a purse from a girl. For this petty offense he was given two years of probation. During this time his probation officer discovered that Straffen did not understand the difference between right and wrong, nor did he comprehend the meaning of probation. As there were no supportive family members around the young boy, the probation officer took it upon himself to take John Straffen to a psychiatrist. The result of this, was that John Straffen was certified as a mental defective under the Mental Deficiency Act of 1927. In 1940, a report was compiled on the 10-year-old Straffen, which measured his IQ at 58 and placed his mental age at 6. From June of that year, the local council sent him to a residential school for mentally defective children, at St. Joseph's School in Sanborn. Two years later and John Straffen was moved to a senior school called Bisford Court. He was noted as a quiet boy who preferred his own company, who also took punishment personally and reacted badly to it. In one incident, when Straffen was 14, he was suspected of strangling two prize-winning geese owned by an officer of the school. It was never proven and the incident was forgotten. When Straffen reached the age of 16, the school authorities undertook a review which found his IQ was 64, and his mental age was 9 years and 6 months. Believing him to now be capable of adapting to the outside world, they recommended his discharge. John Straffen returned home to Bath, in March of 1946, where a medical officer examined him and found he still warranted certification under the Mental Deficiency Act. After several short-term jobs, he eventually found employment as a machinist in a clothing factory. In the spring of 1947, Straffen started to follow the compulsion that had originally got him into trouble, thieving. He would go into unoccupied homes and steal small items, only to hide them. Parting his mementos like a magpie, he never brought them home, nor did he give the items to others. On the 27th of July 1947, a 13-year-old girl reported to police that she had been assaulted by a boy named John. He had put his hand over her mouth and said, What would you do if I killed you? I have done it before. This incident would not be connected to John Straffen until much later. Six weeks later and Straffen was in trouble with the authorities. Five chickens belonging to the father of a girl with whom he had quarreled, had been strangled. When he was arrested under suspicion of this crime and a burglary, Straffen in an interview immediately confessed, not only that, he confessed to many other incidents to which he had not been connected. For his crimes he was remanded in custody and the medical officer of Horfield Prison examined him, certifying that he was indeed mentally retarded. On the 10th of October, 1947, John Thomas Straffen was committed to Hortham Colony in Bristol, under the Mental Deficiency Act of 1913. Hortham was an open colony which was designed to hold 600 inmates and it specialized in training mentally retarded offenders for resettlement. As he had been under investigation for burglary, John Straffen's certificate stated that he was not a violent or dangerous propensities. He was apparently a model citizen at Hortham, 
though he kept away from the other inmates and preferred solitude. As a result of this good behavior, in July 1949, Straffen was transferred to a lower security agricultural hostel in Winchester. There everything was going well until he stole a bag of walnuts. His old habits had resurfaced and he was sent back to Hartham in February of 1950. In August that year, Straffen once again got in trouble with Hortham authorities, after he went home without leave. He is also said to have resisted the police when they arrived to capture him. In 1951 John Straffen was under examination again, this time at Bristol Hospital where electroencephalograph readings intimated that he had suffered, wide and severe damage to the cerebral cortex probably from an attack of encephalitis in India before the age of six. By now however, much to his delight, Straffen was considered sufficiently able to be allowed a period of unescorted time at home. He used the time well and got a job at a market garden, which the authorities then allowed him to keep. Hortham then licensed him into the care of his mother at the family home, it was her duty now. When Straffen's 21st birthday came, it was time for yet another assessment, this time by Hortham. They decided to continue his certificate for a further five years, though the family disputed this and appealed. As a result of the appeal, the medical officer of Health for Bath, examined Straffen again on 10 July, 1951. He found improvement in Straffen's mental age, taking it up to 10 years. Due to this he recommended that Straffen's certificate be renewed for a temporary term of six months, with a view to discharge at the end of this period. On 15 July, 1951, John Straffen went on a visit to the cinema by himself. On his way, his route took him past No. 1 Camden Crescent, in Bath. Where, playing out in the garden, was five-year-old Brenda Goddard, who lived with her foster parents. According to John Straffen's later statement to the police, he had seen Brenda Goddard gathering flowers and offered to show her some more better. After lifting Brenda over a fence into a copse, he strangled her before brutally smashing her head against a stone. After the murder, Straffen didn't make any attempt to hide the body and simply went on to the cinema nonchalantly and without a care in the world. He returned home that evening as if nothing had happened. Although he was not considered a violent offender, Straffen was still seen as a suspect by Bath Police. First, the police visited Straffen's employer to check on his movements, which resulted in Straffen being dismissed on 31 July. Then he was interviewed as a matter of course on 3 August, but nothing useful was gleaned from the meeting. On 8 August, 1951, Straffen decided to make another visit to the cinema. Here he met nine-year-old Cicely Batstone. After talking and gaining the trust of the young girl, he took her to a different cinema to see another film. After this, they traveled on the bus to a meadow on the outskirts of Bath. Once there, the brutal Straffen strangled her to death. The conditions of the murder left numerous witnesses who had seen Straffen in the company of the girl, the bus conductor acknowledged John Straffen as a former workmate and a couple in the pasture had seen Straffen very closely. Even a policeman's wife had also seen Straffen with the girl. When the alarm was raised the next morning, the policeman's wife guided authorities to where she had seen the pair last, and the body of Cicely Batstone was then discovered. Her subsequent description of the possible offender, was enough to immediately identify John Thomas Straffen as the suspect. On the morning of 9 August, 1951, John Straffen was arrested for the murder of Cicely Batstone. Straffen shockingly, then made a statement admitting he had killed Cicely Batstone, and confessing to the murder of Brenda Goddard at the same time. Stating for the officers, the other girl, I did her the same. John Straffen was then charged with murder and remanded him into custody. On 31 August, 1951, after a two-day hearing at Bath Magistrates Court, 
John Straffen was deemed fit to stand and ordered to trial for the murder of Brenda Goddard. On 17 October, 1951, at Taunton Assize Court, Straffen stood trial for murder. However, there was only one witness to be heard, Dr. Peter Parks, medical officer at Horfield Prison. Dr. Parks testified that Straffen was unfit to plead. The judge then commented that, In this country we did not try people who are insane. You might as well try a baby in arms. If a man cannot understand what is going on, he cannot be tried. On this basis the jury formally returned a verdict. The verdict was that, John Thomas Straffen, was insane and he was unfit to plead. Although he wouldn't go to jail, Straffen would still be locked up. He was removed to Broadmoor in Berkshire after the hearing. Broadmoor had been transferred to the Ministry of Health at this time and those committed to it had been renamed patients. Inside Broadmoor High Security Hospital, John Straffen earned himself a job as a cleaner. On 29 April, 1952, Straffen went to clean some outbuildings with an attendant and another patient. After excusing himself to shake out his duster, Straffen then waited until he wasn't being watched, before climbing onto a shed roof which enabled him to scale the 10-feet perimeter wall. Although he was stated to have a low IQ, he certainly wasn't unaware, Straffen had already made sure he was wearing his civilian clothes under his work gear. Soon after escaping, Straffen came upon Mrs. Doris Spencer who was working in her garden. They struck up a conversation and he asked her if he could have a drink of water, which she duly obliged. After Straffen had slaked his thirst, they discussed the closeness of Broadmoor and the likelihood of escapes. After ten minutes Straffen left. At about five o'clock. The mentally ill murderer reached Farley Hill and he came to the point where a five-year-old girl was playing. Linda Bowyer was riding her bicycle around the village without a care in the world. Moments later, Linda Bowyer was dead. Unperturbed and acting as if nothing had happened, Straffen then begged a cup of tea from another resident, Mrs. Kenyon. She agreed to give him a lift to the bus stop. As they approached, Straffen saw some men in uniform and asked whether they were police, after Mrs. Kenyon said that they were, he bolted out of the car and made his getaway. Mrs. Kenyon told the men, who were actually Broadmoor nurses, what had happened to her passenger. With Broadmoor staff hot on his tail, Straffen was recaptured a few minutes later. On the journey back to Broadmoor, Straffen is quoted as saying, I have finished with crime. The body of little Linda Boyer was found the next morning. Early the next day, police went to Broadmoor to interview Straffen, before news of the disappearance and murder of a local child had reached the hospital. The police went to Straffen's room and woke him up, asking him what he had done when he was free. Straffen replied immediately with the line, I do not kill her. When the detective in charge told Straffen that no one had suggested anyone had been killed, Straffen said I know what you policemen are, I know I killed two little children, but I did not kill the little girl. After the officer then confirmed that a girl had been killed near where Straffen was recaptured, Straffen stated I did not kill the little girl on the bicycle. On the 1st of May, 1951, John Thomas Straffen was charged with the murder of Linda Boyer. The next day he stood before Reading County Magistrates and was remanded into custody. This was despite the order committing him to Broadmoor. It was decided by the magistrates, that since Broadmoor had failed to guarantee Straffen's security, he should be remanded to Brixton Prison with immediate effect. On 21 July, 1951, Straffen's murder trial opened and the twice-charged murderer pleaded not guilty. His defense opted to leave the question of his sanity as a consideration for the jury. The prosecution case, in an unusual move, applied to call forth the evidence about the two murders in Bath. The application was vehemently resisted by Straffen's defense, as it was prejudicial. Unfortunately, the judge didn't see it that way and he ruled the evidence admissible.
On the second day, the judge explained that he was compelled to discharge the jury and start again. Apparently, one of the jurors had gone to a political club in South Sea and told those present that he was on the jury for the Straffen case. He then went on to state that Straffen was not guilty, and that one of the prosecution witnesses themselves had murdered Linda Boyer. After the first day's proceedings were reiterated for the second jury, Straffen's defense called several witnesses, who had seen Straffen in earlier years and gave evidence of his mental condition. In response, the prosecution then called prison medical officers and psychiatrists to give a firm rebuttal. It seemed they were contesting the case did for tat. At the end of proceedings, the jury retired and came to a verdict in just under an hour. Their verdict, John Thomas Straffen was guilty of murder. The implications of this verdict were severe and far-reaching. By coming to this decision the jury had declared Straffen sane. Mr. Justice Castles sentenced John Straffen to death. Straffen's defense tried to appeal twice, but both grounds of the appeal were dismissed and they were then refused leave to appeal to the House of Lords. John Thomas Straffen was sentenced to be executed on 4 September, 1951. On 29 August, less than a week before Straffen was due to meet his maker, it was announced that the Home Secretary had recommended to Queen Elizabeth II, that Straffen be reprieved. The grounds of this reprieve are unclear. After the reprieve Straffen was moved to Wandsworth Prison and was the subject of an escape attempt in 1956. Apparently a group of prisoners were going to make good their escape, by helping Straffen leave and then letting him create enough of a diversion that they would make a clean getaway. Due to this incident, Straffen was moved to Horfield Prison in Bristol. In January of 1984, when Kenneth Barlow was released after serving 26 years for murder, John Thomas Straffen became the longest-serving British prisoner. In 1994, John Straffen made a select list of about 20 prisoners serving life sentences, who must never be released at all. In 2001, the 50th year of Straffen's imprisonment was fast approaching and his solicitors called for his case to be reopened, on the grounds that he had not been fit to stand trial. An investigative journalist who examined previously confidential records, uncovered that Straffen was reprieved after a majority of doctors who examined him, found that he was insane. There was also some doubt about Straffen's guilt in the murder of Linda Boyer. This was because Straffen had no fingernails with which to cause the injuries seen on Linda Boyer's body, and because some witnesses placed the time of the murder after his recapture. Straffen's application to the Criminal Cases Review Commission was turned down in December of 2002. On 19 November, 2007, John Thomas Straffen died at Franklin Prison in Durham. He was 77 years old and had been in prison for a British record of 55 years.